Hey there, and welcome to another episode of your favorite libertarian. We are continuing our series on the MNP9 M2.0 Optics Ready Full Size, full series on this guy. Uh, so far we've done purchasing it, first impressions as far as like first mags through the gun, accuracy at different distances, etc. We've also done a video on a full tabletop review of this guy, close-ups, all the nitty gritty if you will. We've also installed this red dot and given you a full installation video and tested it at the range to one, zero the optic, but two, just make sure that this plastic mount that comes with this series of pistols actually worked. And now that we have it set up in its full configuration of optic and light, we are going to look at some holster options. I have a riddle for you. What is under $44, provides deep concealment for a full-size handgun, light, and optic? Answer, the Bravo Concealment Torsion 3.0. And now it's time for everyone's favorite portion of the video, the unbagging. First I'll show you the bag on the front. Most important part, made in the USA. Over 100,000 customers served, 30 day money back guarantee, and an unlimited lifetime warranty, which is pretty cool. This bag itself is also pretty cool because it is a Ziploc style bag, probably not Ziploc branded. But as you can see, oh, you can reuse this bag if you want. We have our invoice and this proves to you that this was $43.49. Shipped, crazy. Have a little pamphlet that comes with it. Feel free to pause this. And take a gander. You also have a Bravo concealment sticker the holster itself and don't worry i'll get some very detailed pictures to show you and roll those in and i will also be doing all sorts of demonstrations with this holster on the back though it does actually say what it's for which is cool if you have a lot of these and you're like oh what gun is this for what light combo is this for it says it right there and lastly you have a bag that includes your tuckable concealment clip is what i'm going to call it it's probably called something else it comes with hardware and the clip itself. This clip allows you to tuck a shirt here and have this clipped on a belt. And this piece would go right here. So you'd remove these two clips, just have a single clip, and this would allow you to tuck your shirt in between here and have a even deeper concealment type holster if you're wearing a suit or have to wear fancy shirts for what you do. It's included free of charge, pretty cool. First things first, we're gonna go to me wearing this holster and using this holster so you can see how it works. And then I'll explain to you why I think it works so well. Over to me. One question I'm sure I'll get is, does this holster print? Well, I'm carrying a full-size gun <laughs> with a light and an optic on it, so it's probably gonna print a little bit, but as you can see straight on, you can't really tell that I have a gun on me right now. And if I go to the side, not really noticeable. The other side, maybe you can notice a little because it's right-handed draw, so this would be where the grip is. That's gonna be the most printy part but kind of hard to tell, right? Now from the front or from the side, if you go to stand up or sit down or hunch over, this grip texture on this particular gun is really grippy and really aggressive. So if I go to sit down, 
do something like that, it's going to catch on the fabric and you're going to have this type of situation. Just remember as you're moving around in it to pull your shirt down and you should be okay. Hope that helps. Hey guys, I got my shirt tucked in for you so I look super cool and also so I can show you how tight this gun is to my body with the Torsion 3.0 technology. As you can see, I mean, it doesn't get any closer to my body than this. Every part of the grip is touching my body. And that is because of that Torsion 3.0 technology. I'll roll in a few pictures here so you can see how it works, the design. It's patented by Bravo Concealment, so no one else can use this particular design. But it makes sense why this gun's grip is pushed in so far to your body when you wear this holster. And that is why it prints a very little. Let's talk about rubbing. I'm going to show you the wear marks on the gun itself and I'll also try to roll in some pictures of wear marks inside of the holster so you can get an idea of where the points of contact are, where the pressure is and what's retaining the gun slash light. Just to give you some more data, I don't know if it really matters at all to you, but just so you know, don't be alarmed if you see some plastic shaved off as you are doing all your dry firing and drawing. So here's the gun itself, and again, as you saw, I carry appendix, and that's how I draw. As I'm bringing the gun out, you can see as this muzzle is leaving the holster itself, it is rubbing up against this portion of the slide here, and also here, which makes sense because as I'm pulling it out, this is what's rubbing against and then coming up. And then also the light, because it's retained by the light, got plastic shavings here. You can see I'm rubbing it off right now. So it's not like it's marring the finish or anything. It's just you know, plastic. Same thing over here and on this side as well. Just a bit of a data point for you. Also, in the holster, I'll try to see if I can do some close-up pictures and roll this in right now. But there's rubbing right here where the light is being squeezed, obviously. That's the biggest one. There's a little bit of a volume control looking icon, <laughs> kind of a wedge, if you will. And what this does is pretty neat. So it allows you to adjust how tight you want the light to be squeezed in the holster. So if you put this screw further up, it's looser. If you put it further down, it's tighter. And that makes sense because of the shape and the design that they have here. And what's cool about it is when you are holstering, as you push down, it gets progressively harder to push down until it clicks. So it gets tighter and tighter and then it clicks. And then as you're pulling up, it gets progressively looser so that it can start coming out. So a pretty cool design, but that is one area where you are going to have some rubbing and some wear. And then the channels that basically met up with the gun are also points where it's starting to shave off a little bit of plastic, but nothing to be alarmed with, I don't think. I'll probably do a long-term update on this. I've been carrying this a few weeks now and have been doing a lot of dry fire practice with it, but I just wanted to give you some data points and I will give you a more long-term longevity, durability video, uh, probably like, I'll say like in six months or so, let's say. Uh, remind me if you don't see a video in about six months. Let's talk about training. There is a great class for people who have handguns with lights on them, and that is MDFI's low light handgun. They also have a low light long gun class. Tons of great classes on the website, which is trainmdfi.com. Check them out, they're awesome. I say all that to say, if you are gonna be carrying a light on your handgun, you need to practice when you're drawing, activating that light. More than likely, if you're in a situation where you're gonna to have to draw your gun, it's going to be in a low light situation, whether that's home defense, out in the streets, etc. And you need to be able to see what you're about to shoot. It's the morally responsible thing to do, and it makes it a lot easier to see what you're shooting at when your light's on. So as far as my draw goes, again, you guys can pick it apart and <laughs> you can make your own suggestions on how to draw, but this is how I do it and how I practice so that if I need to use it, I'll be able to see what I'm shooting at, is grabbing my garment, whatever is covering the gun with my support hand, kind of cross drawing it, pulling my shirt up and 
over to make sure it's completely out of the way. Then taking my firing grip, getting a nice firm firing grip on my gun, pulling it up as I pass my support hand, I let go and I make a little bit of a claw with my support hand. And as I'm coming up, I click on the light and then getting to my full grip and extension, line the sights and you know the rest from there. If I am needing to reload or move, the light turns off and I do whatever type of manipulations I need to do. Light comes back on when I'm ready to shoot again. That's how I do that. Is that for you? I don't know, but you might want to think of some type of way of turning on your light as you are coming up and bringing the gun into the fight. Here's that a little bit faster. Comfort. So this is a full size handgun with a flashlight on it. Is this comfortable to carry in this holster? It's actually not bad. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is this, you know, torsion design. So instead of having a claw that's pushing like a straight holster setup, just having it dig into you, this is actually shaped in the way that it needs to be so that it's already pushing into you. And that part's very comfortable. I've owned other holsters, appendix style holsters. They have a claw. A lot of holsters these days have a claw. They don't do anything about the shape of the holster. They just throw a claw in it and say, oh, well, that's going to make it, you know, push into you. It's like, great, but that's also making it push into you. So it's super uncomfortable. So anytime I ever had one of those where it came with claw, I immediately took it off after trying that. I was like, ah, gosh, it's just digging into me. It's horrible. This doesn't have that. So it actually makes it pretty comfortable. One thing that I've never done before, though, is have a light on a handgun and carry it in my pants. A couple tips for that. It's fine when I'm standing or walking around or, you know, drawing or whatever. But when I go to sit down, what I do is I take my belt and I just kind of like pull it up a little bit. And then when I sit down, this isn't digging into me as much. I can still tell it's there, but it's not as bad. Also, if you are someone who like bends down to do stuff like tie their shoes, tie your kids' shoes, whatever. I would recommend squatting from now on with this setup. Other than that though, very comfortable. I was actually surprised how comfortable this is with a full-size handgun that has a flashlight attached to it. One thing that has been a bit of an adjustment with this is having all the stuff on one side of my body and nothing on the other side to kind of balance it out. I'm used to like a tier one concealed Axa Slim that's primarily what I've used in the past. So you have the holster on one side holding the gun, and then on the other part of it, there's something holding a spare mag. So it kind of evens everything out from, or not really printing, but just like you know, way the body shaped thing. And then also distributes weight a bit more evenly. And obviously the big benefit is you have a spare mag that you can draw from and, and use if you need it. I am looking for recommendations for a standalone mag carrier that I can put on the other side that is cantable for a Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 17 round mag. Any suggestions are greatly appreciated. If you could leave those in the comments section below, that would be awesome. But we haven't really had a pros and cons section of this video. We've just pretty much been talking about all the pros throughout the video. So now I'm gonna take a second and talk about some of the cons with this holster. If you want a lot of color options and patterns on your holster, this is not it. I believe the color options currently are either black or black. Unless you have a Glock or some type of M&P, you're probably not going to be able to find a holster light gun combo that is ready to ship. <laughs> Let's drop the holster. That is probably how they keep the cost so low. They don't have a ton of options. They have one color option. They have a few gun light combo options. And that's not a con for me because I happen to have a popular handgun in a popular light, but if you have some type of really weird gun light combo, you're probably not going to be able to find a holster for your gun and light on their website. And lastly, this is not what the Instagram operators are running, so you're not going to look super cool posting Instagram pics with your gun in this holster. Sorry guys, you're just not. 
Well, that's going to do it for me and the Bravo Concealment Torsion 3.0 holster. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything I didn't cover about this holster that you'd like to know, leave it in the comment section below. If you have purchased this and used this holster daily and have had it for an extended period of time, let me know how it's doing longevity wise in the comment section below. And just let me know your general thoughts on it, if it's comfortable, if it's not, if you like it, etc. I doubt anyone's going to be able to find a better option than this for the price. $43.49. Shut your mouth. Also, quick reminder, I'm looking for a way to carry one of these next to my handgun. So any suggestions are more than welcome in the comment section below. There's really no final thoughts other than I dig it. It's a great deal and uh, carries a really big gun and makes it not feel like I'm carrying a really big gun.